This video is about text mining and email classification into spam or ham. In fact, it's the first video of a whole series of text mining videos. This is the first, and this one actually shows a high level end to end run of a process showing this classification. And if you want to sing along at home, you can import the process, which is contained in a file called Spam Finder. Now, the video focuses on a case study rather than individual operators, as was done in previous videos, and this is because it's a better way for viewers to relate what they see to specific problems that they have, and not only understand the techniques, but you can also see the trade-offs that you need to think about as you, as you proceed. In this video, we won't go into any detail, and there is a lot of detail. I mean, I, I list them here, word vectors, stemming, engrams, meta costs. Those will be covered in later videos. The point being that we'll see the effect of changing these things on the performance of the overall process. So not only will you see the techniques, but you'll also see, in some cases, there are trade-offs to think about. Now, the process itself, before we look at it, it has six parts to it. First part creates a word vector, or a, essentially an example set. And in the interest of citing the right references if you look at this reference you'll see the data i'm using what i've done is i've taken 200 of the emails in that set to make into a training set and the remainder is the test set so that's the first part of the process the second part it does some attribute reduction now for now i'm going to leave that as is it won't do anything but we're leaving it there later so that it makes it easier to think of this entire series of videos as one collective whole so we'll come to that later but the third part is building a model so having built your training set you build a model fourth part that's word lists now a word list is required um, for now the method of generating the word list will ignore how it's done but it's extremely important to have a word list for the fifth part we're actually then going to take the test data in process it and then finally we're going to apply the model that we built at the beginning and interpret the results. So there's that any further ado, let's look at the process. Here it is. If I click this operator execution order button, you can see these numbers correspond to the numbers in the previous picture. But the first thing is get the training data. So if you remember, this is 200 emails, 100 ham, 100 spam, and uh, basically the process documents from files operator will take the contents of two directories in this case, it could be as many as you want, and it labels all of the documents it finds in those directories with either spam or ham, depending on which directory they came from. There's a certain amount of setting of versus the parameters here, so I'm setting term occurrences, I'm pruning lightly to reduce the number of attributes, but anyway, let's just run this to see what happens. So the end result would be 200 examples, so 200 emails, 100 of them are ham, 100 are spam, correct? And then there are 130 regular attributes, and the values of these attributes are set to the term occurrences. In this case, this means how many times this word appeared in this email. So the word available appeared twice in this email. And you can see, you can sort of see the rest of them, quite a sparse matrix. Now the point is, we're going to build a model from this. There is this process um, step here in the way. For, for now, we're going to ignore this. In future, this will become important when we use this to filter out attributes that are not relevant. And we're going to go straight to this. This is, this is where the model is built, and we can get an estimate of the performance that it would have if it were presented with unseen data. So again, we're now going to set a breakpoint here and run. And you can see here is the estimated performance. And you can see actually it's 84% as an overall. And you can see that it's about 80% on predicting spam when in fact it was ham, which is the worst thing to do. And this is the situation where it predicts ham when in fact it's spam, which is okay because then the user can sort it out. So you can see straight away that it's done reasonably well, but actually there's obviously room for improvement. 
and you can also see by the way that we're using naive bays so if we go back now to the to the overall process the next step is to make a word list this essentially drives the words that are allowed to be output from the f this step here which is where the test data is read um, I'll set a breakpoint on this get a word list and you can see the word list and you can see there should be 130 of these and these are the words that are allowed to be present in the test set. It's quite important to get that right. But the important point now is let's run it to the point where we get the test data and we'll see how much data there actually is. It can take a small amount of time because we've got 5,000 odd emails to process here. So that took about 30 seconds. And now you can see that we've got 5,174 examples. We know we actually know the label because we have the data already. And we can see there are 130 attributes. And you can see these attribute names match the names in the original test set. The final thing to do is to apply the model to this test data. So we do that. And this is actually the right. This is the final answer here. So I've, if you remember, I've retained the, the estimate here from the performance vector from before, and this is the performance now on truly unseen data. And you can see that we predict 913 spam out of the sum of those about 3,000, 3,673. That's right. And you can see we've predicted. Um, ham 93 times out of 1501 spam okay so on the face of it is 80 percent but as you can see that's um, obviously there's room for improvement and in particular this number here is very high and it means a lot of a perfectly good email ham email is being marked as spam and is going to be squirreled away in the spam folder and thereby forcing the user to check too much perhaps so there are things we must do to improve that and uh, we like that number but we don't mind if that goes up but we want this number to go down okay so as i say future videos will focus on changing all parts of this process to do a better job so let's just return to a summary so as we saw the estimated performance was about 80 percent and actually the performance on the test data was a bit lower 75 percent this is on the on the key measure which is the incorrect classification as spam for real email so there's room for improvement but bear in mind actually that this is only 200 training examples applied to about 5,000 tests <laughs> it's despite that quite big difference it's still done quite well um, anyway subsequent videos will change parts of this so we can see what improvements can be achieved. So with that, I'll, I'll just put the process back, run it one more time, and just leave the final result there before we move on. Okay, so here's the actual performance, here's the estimated performance.